everybody, welcome to episode two and a new location. This is my home garage. Uh, and as you can see behind me here, it's an absolute tip at the moment. Um, part of the reason <laughs> that I wanted a bigger unit is going to clear out all this stuff to be able to fit a car in here. Uh, so that's the eventual goal. Uh, not any of the cars you've seen, not the Skyline that's over there, which I'll show you in a second. Um, potentially uh, a, a new car that I want to buy now for a future project because I think the prices are going up and up and up and I think it'd be stronger to buy one when I actually want to do the project on that. So that's something for a, for a future date. Um, but at the moment, <coughs> we've got engines, audio parts, more engines, uh, all sorts of stuff in here, plus the to-do list, which needs sorting. So uh, I'm gonna have a little shuffle around, clear some engines out, get them up to the unit, and uh, we'll start building some stuff up there. Next up is to pull up all this floor. Uh, underneath is a little bit unlevel, I think, so we might need to do something with that for uh, now. Maybe we'll just use underlay with a bit extra around the sides. Uh, we might need some sort of screening um, floor stuff to make it level, but we'll uh, we'll have a look once that's up. But we're going to get up first. Whack a load of paint on the walls. It's going to take a few coats, I think. We got some of uh, B&M's finest matte emulsion stuff. We're just going with a, a plain white because the, the floor is going to be quite dark so we want to make sure that it's uh, nice and bright in here. We've got an LED light running, um, we've got some white on the walls, it'll bounce off of so it won't feel too dark in there. Um, so, time to crack on and get this floor up. all of the oil patches that uh, throughout the year dropping engines and dropping oil and things has left so there's probably uh, some five-year-old oil under here um, but what we're doing now is mixing up the paint so by great achievement I've managed to find magnolia instead of pure white but it's fine because what we'll do is use this as a wash coat so 50-50 with water whack it on the walls because these are single black walls and we don't want to just drink it all in uh, so that'll be our first coat we might have to do a couple of coats of that and then we'll crack on go grab some, some brilliant white uh, as I said, we're going to use and whack that on over the top. So this will be fine for our, uh, for our first step. So maybe it was meant to be. It was cheaper. Okay, so we're going to start with Right, so we are five days later and uh, the walls are all looking painted. This is the fourth coat that went on. And uh, to show you how cold it is in England right now, a couple of them are still wet. So you can see sort of some of them are covered really well, other than I sort of drunk it and uh, are not covered so well. So I'm going to start laying the floor anyway because uh, otherwise we'll run out of time. But we can go back over those bricks so it's not too much of an issue. So. Uh, next bit up is is the floor. We have started down here, so what I've put down is, if you see in the garage there's a dip bit all the way around the edge. What I've done is I've laid a sheet of underlay in that dip bit all the way around the edge. 
and then so in strips and then I've laid the, the full bigger underlay over the top of that so that should just absorb some of it. I've decided to go from, from door to door so the, the length of the garage as opposed to the width. Um, I just think that'll be better when the, the car comes in uh, for the loading side of it and also because it's a slight gradient slope that goes down this way so that should help out with that. Um, we'll crack on, give it a go, whack up a uh, uh, time lapse and, uh, and and crack on from there. There'll be a few tricky bits like the corners on here, which we just need to cut it round round the edge in there, uh, and the door. We've also got a rubber strip, which you can see down here, to go across the door to keep the level, but also stop any water and stuff coming in or leaves and stuff kicking in as well. I had an old strip on the bottom of the garage door. Uh, I'll keep that there, but it doesn't work particularly well. So this one should just raise it up and have a little lump uh, to stop anything from coming in. Um, so yeah. Let's crack on. Right, so we've got a little bit down uh, in the corner here. As you can see, we're sort of building it up as we go through. So cut out the edge from the corner, always leaving a little gap around the edge. Just cut some old bits of board that I, used, that I had in the house that, to use for the uh, gapping all around the edge. And uh, we've laid a box and a half or so uh, down there. What we're going to do next is we've got this strip for the door, as I mentioned earlier, this one here. We're going to lay that down because when we get down to the far end, to the door end, the big door end, we're going to need to uh, know exactly where to butt up to and where to stop our, uh, stop our boards. Um, if you're honest, it's not the best quality board because it's the B&M special stuff um, that I found in the colour I want, but the good thing about it is um, it's nice and cheap. Um, but uh, you know, it is a garage at the end of the day. So it seems to be, once you, once you get it in place, it's buttoned together all right. So uh, hopefully we'll have no gaps and bits between the boards that appear later on when we've got a load on it. Um, and obviously going all the way across, even just this bit here is holding itself down quite well. So once the time we get all the way across, it should be a nice, uh, nice flat floor. So we've already marked up the lines each side and I've cut down the edge of it to match up with the sides here. So what I need to do now is lay some of this cork in, this is special stuff that comes with it, uh, into the middle here, all the way along, and then um, lay it. Now it does take a little while to dry, but we can crack on with everything back there while we wait for this to dry, and then we'll do the butter bits here a little bit later. So, I'm gonna want us to use one of these, but this should. There we go. There's our line. As you might gather by now, I'm not a pro at this. So, um, just a tricky corner to do, which is around the door frame of the garage, this one here. Uh, basically, took a couple of little measurements, drum on the back, but really, so just eyeballed it with the miter saw. It's come out all right. Okay, so we're on the last section of board, and I was hoping we could do it uh, with a full board, width-wise, like this. Trouble is, there's only a little bit left, so we're gonna need to cut it down. Um, so I've already trimmed this one to size, but each board I'm gonna have to measure, because I think it tapers ever so slightly all the way along to the end. So we're just using the jigsaw here, and uh, cutting it down to shape.
Okay, so it's day 412, I don't know, on the garage build and uh, the walls are done, the floor is done. Every single home garage needs a workbench. So that's what we're gonna be working on next, which is here. So I've just cut out the frames uh, of it, we're gonna piece that together, and then that's gonna go at the back here. Now, the brief of this was that we need to fit the car in. There's gonna be different cars in here of all different lengths. Need to make sure I've got clearance underneath. So I'm not gonna have a floor mounted bench. It's actually gonna come back at 45 degrees and go into the wall. So that's what this 100 mil by 100 mil post is for and we're gonna uh, make up some brackets for that to sit into. So uh, let's crack on with building the frame so we can measure everything else up. Okay, we're up the unit and uh, we're gonna fabricate the metal brackets that are gonna hold in that 100 mil post that I was talking about. So, hopefully this old trusty boy will do uh, mail. This is up to six mil thick. This is three mil box extra 100 by 100. Uh, so, all going well, this should cut it fine. So I think we might have uh, we want to max out the capabilities of this thing, 100 mil by 100 mil. If you do a bit of mods, it will cut. Okay, so what we've created is a uh, bit of metal that looks something like this. Uh, 45 degree angle, which is going to go onto our base plate and hold it up at the angle we need. I've also put a hole through it. Um, so that when the wood goes through, a bolt can go through there as well and just hold that on in place if you can see that. Ooh, with the light, nope. There you go. Just put a hole through both sides on there so we just whack a bolt all the way through. Uh, so, what we're going to do now is cut up the sheet metal here for the backing plate and then zip the two together. So, as the plate's done and all uh, smoothed down, we'll give them a bit of a rub down and zip them together with a MIG. Okay, so all varnished up and dry to the touch. And uh, what I've done is marked out, drilled some holes on the on the frame, marked out where they are on the wall, all the way along. Used bigger size drill bits all the way up, uh, three steps until they get to the right size, and then we've got a wall plug in that one as well. Now remember, this isn't for the actual bracing of the bench, because uh, we're gonna have the downward um, feet that do that. This is really just for holding it in place, holding it tight up against the wall, and take a little bit of the downward force. So that's mainly gonna go through the, the feet at 45 degree angle. Uh, on there, so uh, you know, not the biggest screws going into the wall. At this point, we'll have some big angle screws going in down the bottom. Thank you. 
build is making progress. We've got the pictures on the walls. We've got the base bit of the bench sorted. So those metal brackets that we made uh, is what we're fitting on today. Uh, so this is gonna be a case. Drilling through the plates here uh, to give our pilot holes, marking them up onto here. Then we'll know our length down to the wall and where it's gonna hit on the wall. Uh, we'll cut our post, a nice thick post here, and we have to shave down the ends so that they fit within the um, bracket on there. Um, so we'll get all that done now, shave it down with hopefully with the with the, with the bandsaw there, and uh, better get those in place. And then we just have to, and then we'll shoot down and buy the hardware for it. Um, and we can hopefully get that bracket it up. And then after that, it's just a case of making the top bit for it, which should be nice and simple. surface on both sides so we've got a real sturdy piece for it to sit on. So we're going to add our measurement from the wall to here. We're going to add this furthest length on it and then cut from 45 degrees from there on each end and that should give us our post. Once we've done that, this is actually the same size, they're both 100 mil. So we're going to grind this down to the right size so it slots in and then we've got a bolt hole that goes through it's going to be held by a captive each side and that's going to hold it in place once it's all done just to keep it sturdy on there. Probably not needed but a bit of extra support can't help. Ground it down on the end with the mite saw, and uh, now let's give it a, uh, a trial fit. Let's see how it looks. Oh, look at that! Like a glove. So the first support is nearly done. Uh, we've got the both ends on. As you can see here. What we need to do is drill the holes, same as we did before, for this end and mark them up on the wall and we'll get the anchor points in place and then we can get this actually fitted up onto the uh, onto the unit for its first test fit. It's going to come a cut part again because these are going to be painted and this is going to be varnished. Mm. Boom! By the magic of uh, amazing editing, we've got the other side done.
looking pretty good. We've got the two supports in. Um, I won't test it just yet because I've only got a few of the bolts in, but I reckon I, reckon I can take my weight. Um, so next up to do is to pop the supports back out again, paint them all up, and let's fit them in properly. And then after that, we can uh, crack on and get the top bit done. So we should be able to get it all sorted. That'll be the bench complete. And after a quick tidy up, that'll be the garage complete. <laughs> done. I've had to reseal the um, edgings as you can see because the sticky that was on it didn't quite work. So I've used some of the sealant just all around the edge and this is just holding it in place. Uh, but the bench is in, the walls are done, the pictures are up, the floor is down and the edging is on. Really happy with the progress and uh, most importantly now you can fit a car in here. So that's the last thing to test. Um, love, really love the way it looks. It's nice and clean and simple and uh, most importantly, there's room for a car. So the next thing to do is to, um, to try the car in. Yeah, real happy with that. Uh, fits nicely, fits snug underneath the workbench. And plenty of room in the back. Got a nice sturdy bench, it can uh, even probably take my weight, but we uh, won't test that just yet. Thanks for watching guys, and uh, if you need any links to anything that I've done on this video, um, then just give me a shout, let me know, ping me a message, and uh, I'll sort it out for you, I'll uh, see you on the next one. Yeah.